there was a genuine time when the argument for skull and bones versus sea of thieves was a serious debate this time was back in 2017 when neither game was officially out but both ubisoft and rare were releasing trailers and gameplay trying to highlight why they had the best pirate game since 2017 a lot has happened sea of thieves had its release date back in 2018 whereas skull and bones is still getting delayed it was scheduled for the 8th of november and most thought that this was going to be the official release day but no it got delayed again so now it's the case of looking at skull and bones versus sea of thieves just to see whether or not skull and bones actually has a chance but before we do get into the video if you enjoy the content here and want to see the latest from me then make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications every single week we are uploading the latest videos around a number of different ubisoft titles so if you do want to stay up to date on everything then make sure you are following the channel getting back into the video if you asked me back in 2017 which one was going to be the better game i would have said skull and bones i was a massive assassin's creed fan and if ubisoft just followed their plan and released what was a standalone version with multiplayer for assassin's creed black flag then i think most people would be happy but they had to take it into a completely different direction there's even been some players out there which have stated that if Skull and Bones was released in 2018 and they stuck with that original plan, as long as it wasn't a complete buggy mess, they still had a good chance of competing against Sea of Thieves, because Sea of Thieves had nothing in the beginning. But now it's the complete opposite. Most people would lead towards Sea of Thieves, and now it's just a case of seeing whether or not Ubisoft have a chance or a market to actually grow into once they do finally release Skull and Bones in 2023. So let's actually look into the different areas. Firstly, with gameplay. On paper, both games are pirate games, but they're not actually pirate games, especially once we look at Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones is not focusing so much on being a pirate, but more of naval combat. In fact, there's actually no pirate gameplay apart from the moments where you go to outposts, you leave your ship just so you can sell your goods as well as buy into more goods. This is where you'll customize your character as well as customize your ship. But for any type of pirate gameplay, there's nothing actually there. There's no point throughout the game where you'll be able to sword fight or at least at the current state that the game's in. You won't be able to go to these outposts, decide to fight with another player, pull out your sword and start fighting with them. There's also no pirate combat when you board another player's ship. There's the option to board a ship, but it just cuts to a cinematic. A cinematic of other pirates fighting other pirates, but not actually you being able to do this through gameplay. And this is where Sea of Thieves has the advantage in this area. Yes, the gameplay is limited in what can be done, and it's not the craziest combat within the world, but it does allow you to have some type of combat. You are able to jump off a ship, go onto someone else's ship, and being able to just take all the lead loot, get into sword fights with them, and jump off. This is a key point to a pirate game, and Ubisoft are lacking in that area. Their naval combat could be good, as long as it does still stick to what we had back in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but from what some of the gameplay has been shown and how it's been cut together, I don't actually believe that that is the case. Another big aspect of any type of pirate game, but also any type of open world game, is exploration. With Sea of Thieves, you have a contained area which you are able to explore. With the different islands that are there, you are able to go through them. If you see an island within the distance, you are able to sail over to there, you are able to lower your anchor, and you can explore that island. Depending on what the island is will depend what's there. There's some which contain next to nothing. You may be able to find a few animals, maybe a few chests, and that's that. If you're a very low level within Sea of Thieves, that's pretty much what you're limited to do until you build up to other activities. Others actually bring on a bit more excitement as you will see a skull cloud within the air, and this will signify skeleton forts. And these are definitely intense when going through trying to fight off the hordes of enemies but can be extremely fun especially when playing with friends now with skull and bones you can somewhat do this but as with most things it's limited yet again 
you will be able to see a number of islands within the world but just because you can see them doesn't actually mean that you can travel over to them and explore them there's only set islands of which the player can actually dock their ship and actually go to explore the outposts that are available you will always be able to explore them there's no conflict in that area and you should only be going there to sell your goods as well as update your character or your own ship with other types of islands there are activities within the game where you can look for treasure you would need a treasure map to go and do this and this will tell you to go to a very specific island but not every single island will allow you to have treasure and the reason they don't allow that is because well you can't actually travel or explore on them it's incredibly weird that we have this open world game where you can have a pirate but you're not really needed a pirate because it's rare for you to have to explore different islands the only reason that you need them is to go to an outpost to buy upgrades for your ship or customize your character there's no actual purpose for you to have your very own pirate in the game it's just there for the sake of being there in fact just in general with the other activities within the game this really is all that's been listed with skull and bones you're able to meet npcs meet other players take on contracts craft new items and build up your fleet alongside this you'll have treasure maps treasure chests plundering and a few other dynamic events this is all that's there for skull and bones with activities within the game where sea of thieves I can't actually go through them to tell you exactly what's there because there's a lot. We're talking about a game which was scheduled to release in 2018, did release in 2018, and even though it was bare bones right at the beginning, and I certainly had some complaints back then, Rare has managed to deliver consistent updates to it which has just improved it every single time. They have everything that Skull and Bones will have in early 2023 when it is released, plus even more, and they've also put their very own twist on things. With it giving more freedom to the player, depending if they want to be a bit more creative. And this is where it brings us to the point of this video where we talk about the problem with Skull and Bone and what they have to face. The identity of Skull and Bones is completely skewed. And this was talked about by developers themselves when they were part of the team. The original idea for Skull and Bones was to be a multiplayer standalone of Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Take all the good mechanics, put it into an online multiplayer world where players would face off against each other and pretty much leave it at that. And really, when that was advertised, that's what players got on board for. But unfortunately, with changing management over the years, it also led to a change in inspiration and they wanted to completely change the game. This happened so many times that now the identity of Skull and Bones, no one really knows. This is why there's certain things within the game which really doesn't make sense from a design point of view. It's advertised as a pirate game, but really it's based around you playing as a pirate ship with naval combat. The only reason for you to be a pirate is just so that you can actually dock onto these islands, travel and explore, which is limited, and then go back to your pirate ship once you've been able to customize A, your pirate, or your ship, which by the way, can already be half removed if you just remove the pirate itself you would still end up with the exact same experience. It's certainly the case, and it's definitely the way that I feel, that Ubisoft are releasing this game just for the sake of releasing it. They want to get it done and over with. It's been reported that up to now, Skull and Bones has cost Ubisoft the upwards of $120 million. But they have made a deal with the government of Singapore, which is where the main development studio making the game is based. And the Singapore government are supposed to be providing generous subsidies, which is the whole reason why this game is still going. The truth of the matter is, the argument for Skull and Bones vs Sea of Thieves was a genuine argument back in 2017, but since 2018, Sea of Thieves has won it every single possible way. And even though Skull and Bones has had several delays since then, every single time them saying that they're trying to make the game as good as possible, they would have just been better off releasing it in its current state and then providing additional updates. That's exactly what Sea of Thieves did. It wasn't perfect at the beginning, still isn't perfect, but it is still a thousand times better. Still a thousand times better than what Ubisoft are currently creating with Skull and Bones. And now Sea of Thieves has an edge over the pirate game genre since they've had four years plus to build as much content as possible, releasing it and actually improving the game. 
Now, Ubisoft have said that there will be free DLC for Skull and Bones, and maybe there could be something good coming from it. But with this, it's still unlikely to happen. This kind of links back to the problem that we highlighted, that Skull and Bones really doesn't have much of an identity. It's a pirate game where you play as a pirate ship, and everything that you do as a pirate is completely pointless. But anyway guys, let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is there a point of Skull and Bones where you think it could do better than other pirate games that are currently out there? Or do you have a very similar opinion to me that maybe with Skull and Bones they should probably just kill it off? Or at the very least, go back to what was originally advertised back when it was just supposed to be an Assassin's Creed Black Flag standalone with multiplayer where you can fight against other players. Because that is really all I really wanted. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. But anyway guys, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. But for now, I'm going to see ya.